Greetings, JC here for Interface, and today we're going to be talking about the proper way to clean, align, and demagnetize the heads in your cassette tape deck. If you have a large collection of cassettes, and you're thinking seriously about dubbing them into the computer to be digitized for future generations to hear, you're going to want to make sure that your tape player is in tip-top shape so you get the high-quality audio that cassettes are capable of delivering. Cassettes are the most popular form of analog tape ever devised. However, what we're talking about today will apply to other forms of analog audio tape like open reel and 8-tracks as well. No matter what kind of machine you're using, whether it be a nice little stereo component like this or even a Walkman, properly cleaning and demagnetizing and aligning the heads will greatly improve the audio performance. First off, let's talk a little bit about cleaning tape heads and why you need to do it. As you play back and record tapes in your cassette deck, tape is drawn from the supply reel and moved over to the take-up reel by the capstan and pinch roller. This particular deck has two of them because it's an auto-reverse machine. The tape is drawn across the tape head, which records and reads the audio from the tape. After you do this for a while, a lot of tape has gone past these heads. And tape is basically rust glued to backing with a binder. And the binder is sort of like glue. And over time, little bits of the binder and little bits of oxide flake off of the tape and attach themselves to the heads, capstan, and guide, and pinch roller in your tape deck. Now this stuff is like glue, so it attracts more dust and dirt and oxide and binder. And it's pretty obvious that after a while, they're going to get quite gunky. The best solvent to use to clean the heads, guides, and pinch rollers in a tape deck is isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol dries completely and doesn't leave any residue behind. 91% isopropyl from the drugstore is perfectly fine. The other 9% is just distilled water. You can get away with using 70%, which is also called rubbing alcohol. However, you have to keep in mind that that's 30% distilled water, so therefore it's going to be weaker, and you're probably going to have to clean a little longer and scrub a little harder. Also, you'll have to wait for the machine to thoroughly dry before you put a tape in. Don't use anything else besides isopropyl alcohol to clean a tape deck. Household cleaners, Windex, anything with perfumes or any kind of additives will leave residue behind on your tape heads and that's bad for the machine and it's bad for the tapes. You'll need plenty of cotton swabs to clean the heads and transport system in your tape deck. They're the preferred tool. However, don't use cotton swabs to clean video heads in video tape recorders. Video heads are extremely fragile and the cotton fibers can get caught in the gaps and actually break the head. For VCRs, you need special cleaning sticks, or you can use an old t-shirt. Simply dip your cotton swab in isopropyl alcohol and start cleaning. Clean the heads, the guides, the pinch roller, the capstan. Everything that touches the tape needs to be scrubbed clean. Don't use too much pressure. You don't want to knock anything out of alignment, but still, you do want to give them a good scrubbing. Probably the hardest thing to get clean in any tape deck is going to be the pinch roller. You may need to go through two or three cotton swabs until the head of the swab comes back clean from the pinch roller. Be sure to wait for the machine to dry completely before putting another tape in. To align the heads in your tape deck, you'll need a set of jeweler screwdrivers. The kind with plastic handles are best because then you won't be making an electrical connection with the head when you go to adjust the alignment screw. You'll also need a bottle of nail polish. We'll talk about why in just a minute. When we talk about aligning heads in a tape deck, we're talking about making sure that the height, rotation, zenith, and azimuth are in the proper position to accurately read the tracks recorded on a pre-recorded tape. Also, if we're going to be recording with this head, we want to make sure it's in the proper position so that anything that we record with this machine can be played back in another machine accurately. In cassettes, mainly we worry about azimuth alignment. The height, the zenith, and rotation are usually already engineered into the design of the machine and can't be changed easily. To align our tape deck, we'll need to have a tape that's already recorded with proper alignment. The best thing to use is a test tape. 
But cassette test tapes are extremely rare and very expensive when you do find them. A good solution for everyday applications is to use a pre-recorded tape from a major record company. Cassette duplication houses usually are very careful about the alignment of their machines. So a good pre-recorded tape makes an excellent test tape. The actual procedure for aligning a tape deck is really quite simple. Take your test tape and put it in the machine and very carefully turn the alignment screw one way or the other until the cleanest, crispest audio is heard. Most cassette decks allow you to remove the cover of the door or the door itself to give you access to the alignment screw. In portable machines you may see a little slot right near the head that allows you to get a jeweler screwdriver in to align the head. These screws are extraordinarily touchy. A 30 second of a turn can make a big difference, so take your time and be patient. And make sure that the only screw that you're turning is the azimuth alignment screw. If you accidentally remove one of the screws from the head assembly that holds it into the machine, first of all, you'll destroy the height alignment, and second of all, if that screw falls out, they're usually very hard to find and very hard to get back in. One of the great things about working with cassette decks is, is that usually the playback head is the record head. So if the playback head is in proper alignment, that means that the tape deck is also in proper alignment for future recordings as well. To get the tightest alignment on a stereo machine, use a Y adapter to combine the right and left channels into one channel and listen to that while you turn the alignment screw. The azimuth alignment in a stereo machine not only affects the audio quality in the left and right channels individually, it also affects the phase relationship between the two channels. Making sure that you align your tape deck while listening to a mono mix will ensure that your tape deck is mono compatible. Aligning a mono machine is really quite easy. Simply turn the alignment screw until you hear the most high frequencies. That's it. When you've finished aligning your machine and you're satisfied that it's close to perfect, use a drop of nail polish to lock the alignment screw in place. This is especially helpful on auto reverse machines that tend to knock themselves out of alignment when the playback direction changes. Just make sure that you put a drop of nail polish on both the forward and reverse alignment screws in the head assembly. Over time, the heads in a tape recorder can become magnetized. They pick up a magnetic charge and become like little permanent magnets. A slightly magnetized head will give more noise on playback and have reduced high frequencies. An extremely magnetized head will actually damage your tapes because every time you play back a tape, it will erase your tape just a little bit. The way to fix this is to use a head demagnetizer. They're available on the internet and they're really quite inexpensive and they're good insurance to make sure that your tape collection stays safe as you play them back. To use it, all you do is plug the demagnetizer in, move it slowly to the head, hold it there for about 10 seconds and then pull it away. You do this for every piece of metal in the tape transport to make sure that there are no magnetic charges. However, you must be careful when using a demagnetizer because if you accidentally remove power from the demagnetizer while it's close to the head, it can actually leave a stronger magnetic charge than the one you're trying to remove. I use a demagnetizer when I get old tape decks that I'm restoring to make sure that my tapes will be safe when they're played back. How often should you demagnetize? Well, once a year is a good idea. However, if you're using a tape deck that you bought yourself brand new and you're simply playing back tapes in it, you may not have to demagnetize the machine ever. But if you're buying used tape decks at yard sales, I strongly urge you to get a demagnetizer and demagnetize the heads before you play back any of the tapes in your collection. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helps you to get the best audio performance from your tape equipment, both old and new. For Interface, I'm Jay Sidney.